Fellow comrades, welcome to the channel. This is going to be a tutorial for those that are interested in this um, old game. Up from this point, it is a game that has 10 years since the publication. But I have decided that I need to do a tutorial because there is nowhere to be seen a tutorial on YouTube, a proper tutorial actually. So I'm going to start here with um, the game that puts you on feudal Japan in the Sengoku Jidai period. This is the first thing you're going to see. This is the main screen. In the main screen you see single player, multiplayer options and credits. And then the button, the button here that says exit. Single player, as you, as you uh, eventually know, is the way you start a game in which you will go and uh, fight a single player campaign against the computer or the so called AI. The multiplayer host or join a game against other human opponents over the internet or LLAN uh, connection. The options allows you to go and have a taste of what you want in terms of difficulty, what you want in terms of autosave stuff like that. I usually use this as the annual. This means that it's going to save every six months. I don't play with hints. I have played different Pardex games, but for those that are completely noob, you can check this. Then here the video is going to ask you for some sort of information about the resolution of your screen, the refresh rate, so on and so forth, controls the speed of the scroll and the zoom. You can either check or uncheck the zoom into cursor, whatever you want. This is pretty, pretty straightforward. Then the credits, of course, uh, you are going to see a list of people who contributed to the game. Uh, you can see um, familiar names for those that are fans of Paradox. You will see here all of the people that work on this project. And then we have Exit, of course, which quits Sengoku and return you to your desktop. But that is the least thing that we want up to this point. Now that we're going to go into single player and we're going to see here a beautiful and fancy map of Japan, of course, there is a lot of information that you can find on the forums in Paradox Plaza. You can go there. There is uh, the forum.paradoxplaza.com, a place that you can find always a lot of information about the games of this uh, amazing publisher. And another thing is that because of these games are very complex, sometimes there are a lot of things that are uh, deep into the mechanics that are very difficult to explain unless you experience them. So this is these are games that you have to experience, you have to play them in order to understand those small details. However, I'm gonna try and do my best. So what do we can see here? We see a big map, a beautiful map of Japan. I'm always going to say this. Japan is a beautiful island. We can see here um, the Onin War that starts on May 26th and the Kanto War. You can see a description here of both different uh, situations. However, um, when you begin, the it has an impact, where, where do you begin? If you begin even in 1551, you can see here, or 1467, 1467, it is going to be just the clans. Basically, it's going to put you historically in the, in the moment that you are selecting. However, let me explain you a little bit. The Onin War features a sweeping conflict between the Japan's two most powerful clans, the Hosokawa and the Yamana, for the right to succeed the Ashikaga. So in this period, the Onin War, is going to be the Yamana clan, the Yamana Zosen, and the Hosokawa Katsumoto. They are going to fight to have the the right to succeed the Ashikaga uh, Yoshimasa as the actual shogun, which is this guy over here. This is concerning the Onion War. The Kanto War is a little bit different. It's it's the same year, but it um, talks about the situation here with the Wazugi, 
the Wazugi and the Ashikaga clans. The Ashikaga clans, which are part of the STEM clans and stuff like uh, from, from the Ashikaga Yoshimasa. Select this a scenario and then click on the map to browse among the playable characters and clicking a province will display its ruler. So this is basically what you go on. You click in different parts of the map and you will see who is the clan leader of each name that you are seeing on the screen, okay? And what you are going to see here, for example here, I just click here in Uchi, it says clans. You can go to Damius as well. We're going to talk about this. But for example, here, I click here, and we see Uchi Masahiro. Uchi Masahiro, it, it has here his three most vital attributes. And this is the reason this is CK2 in uh, Japan, but it's more simple. Because here you have three attributes, diplomacy, martial, and intrigue. You don't need to deal with other attributes that are going to be added in CK2 because this was made uh, before CK2. This is a less complicated CK2. However, it has its own thing, which is why you are here, right? So these are the main three attributes, diplomacy, the martial and intrigue. And then you have the portrait of uh, the actual uh, guy that you are going to play. And these down here are all the vassals that you're going to get. The bar here, the bar here indicates an approximate difficulty rating for starting the game as that character. So it's going to say that um, this thing here means that it's going to be very, very easy. And the school here is going to tell you, the more it gets to the school, it's going to tell you that it's going to be very, very difficult for you. So it depends on what is your knowledge. You can go for very difficult ones. Uh, Akamatsu, you can see, is very difficult because you start as a child. With Zugi, for example, it's a little bit more easy. Things like uh, clans that are uh, up here in the north are a little bit more easy. And clans that are here are quite, quite normal, you, you see. Apparently, you're not going to find any clan, as far as I can see, that is completely easy. This is, this is tough at the beginning. At the end, we are in civil war. Now I have loaded one of my previous uh, saves. Actually, I did a let's play on this save. You can uh, go and find the let's play on the channel. First thing, as always, is the interface. The interface of Sengoku is designed to show you the most relevant information relating to what you're doing in the game at any moment. The aim is to keep your screen uncluttered while making a great deal of information easily accessible. The main map is the first thing you're going to see. If you zoom out, you see all of Japan. If you zoom in, you can go in into the actual land and you can see this stuff. Now, something very neat about zooming in in this uh, game is something that I miss right now in newer versions of Paradox games. You can hold control and you can look at this. Look how beautiful this is. You can see all of the of the map, all the 3D map in like this. You can go and look around. You can see the islands. How beautiful is this, isn't it? If you click uh, backspace, you can return to the normal screen. So that is the main map. Then we have the date bar here. When you click space bar, you um, activate the time. And if you click space bar again, you stop the time. You can either do it by clicking in the actual uh, date bar. And these buttons here allows you to make the time go faster you can see how faster it is. It is going to depend on actually your uh, the power of your computer, how fast it goes, and if it crashes actually. And then you can uh, move it uh, slower, faster, whatever you want. This is concerning the date bar. Then we have here a button here. This just below the date bar is a circular icon representing a list. You're going to see here a lot of information that is 
super super useful the main buildings armies message rules actions of masters everything that is here you can find actually by clicking and going into the actual uh, menus for example here here which i'm going to talk about but here you have uh, a very accessible way to find all of this stuff the main it says each of the important information concerning armies money the the buildings that are being uh, built then you can click here and you can uh, make them collapse or uh, expand whatever you want you have very different symbols of buildings armies and stuff like that which is pretty neat you can use this or you can simply click again in the outliner and make it disappear whatever you want is your choice then we have here down here uh, we have the minimap as always you can click on the minimap and move the actual uh, main map or the actual screen depending on what you want to see very quickly you see the minimap of japan here and here we see these are the map modes these are called the map modes so i'm going to talk about the map modes because map modes are very important so the first one is terrain terrain here as you can see you can zoom in you can see rivers for example farmlands you can see here you can see wooded lands woodlands rivers uh, mountains these things are important because if you hover here every time you hover on a paradox game it's going to give you a a tool tip it's going to give you a it's going to appear another box that is going to show you important information here for example in uh let's go to for example kosuma kosuma it says that it has 24.1 planes 5.4 farmlands and 20 23 point two um, hills 47.3 forest it is representing in numbers what we are seeing here graphically okay this is for the terrain then we have clans clans as you can see clans here divides them up by local rulers allegiance to the major clans well actually this is what it says on the manual but here it's basically a mode in which you're going to see the clans that are all over japan up to this point then you have the the main the main here shows in green your own possessions okay everything that is green is yours okay that's simple as that then you have the kuni kuni is showing you now this is something important kuni here in Sengoku is called is what it's called in CK2 a duchy. So all of these that you see Tosa, Nagato, Bungo, uh, Hyuga, Mino. Now these are kunis, but these are duchies. Each duchy is separated by koris, which are individual um, regions, individual provinces that are inside the kunis. And another important thing, if you have ever played Total War Shogun, you will remember that these are the actual daimyos. So you see the Suruga, the daimyo of Sagami, stuff like this. This is going to be very familiar if you have played, if you ever played Total War Shogun. Then we have the diplomatic. Diplomatic is um, divides the map according to the ruler's diplomatic relations with you, such as war and alliances. Now, uh, if I click uh, myself. Uh, which is uh, here you can see that uh, it shows these areas here are red this means that i am at war whatever is red means war so basically red means not good and green means good in in paradox language so everything that is red means that you are at war and you can go you do the same with other clans for example sue clan is at war with these guys Kikuchi clan is at war with these guys and even if I cl click here This guy is at war with this guy. So whatever you want to see it's a uh, to see in a very uh, Quick glance what is happening diplomatically relationships shows you the other characters opinion of you This means that everything that the more green it is the best relations you have 
this is showing what are the relations we have with all Japan. Then we have the factions. Factions here, they are a very important aspect here. Uh, I'm going to go deep in this because it's very nice. But up to this point, which is the year 1507, the Europeans haven't arrived. Why I'm telling about the Europeans? Well, because there are three factions. Shintoists, Buddhism, and the Christians. And this means that right now we have the Reds, that are the Shintoists, and the um, Orange are the Buddhists. These are showing you where are buildings that are from those factions all over the map, scattered all over the map. It will show you what is the allegiance of uh, those clans that are in this region to what faction. If you capture, let's say, some region here that is red, you will have to either destroy or continue the existence of this region with the actual building, faction building that is built, already built in there. We're going to go deep in that. And now finally, we have the revolt risk. Revolt risk, as you can see, is going to show you a general understanding of where are the regions that are going to revolt, which regions are revolting, and which regions are okay. This is concerning the peasantry. This side here, now let's go again to the uh, terrain map mode and let's unclutter this a little bit. In this side we have different buttons here. Here you have the zoom in. Every time you click you can zoom in or zoom out. This you can do with the scroll as well, as usual, as per usual. Then you have here, I'm going to go from button to the top. So then you have the find province. Now this is very neat. Sometimes it's very confusing where how you can find the actual capitals of the of the clans. For example, let's say the clan um, Takeda, just to name a random clan. You click here, it's going to highlight the actual uh, capital, let's say the actual province that is the main capital of the Takeda clan. If you see the clans here, you see the Takeda have these uh, lands over here, these here, they could have lands over here, whatever you want. But here it's telling us that Miyoshi is the actual um, area, the main area of the Takeda, the main home of this clan. And you can see that as well with these banners. These are called Mons in Japanese, but the banners will tell you, if you uh, learn how to find them, are going to tell you which are the capitals of the different clans. Just to illustrate this, for example, here. Now, this is a revolt. For example, uh, let's say here. You can see here. You can see this. This is the clan Cookie, and the Cookie clan. Well, actually, this is the only, the only, um, the only region they have. So this means that this is the capital. So you will learn how to see which is the capital. Uh, of each uh, area. For example, here we know that uh, Ishizu is the capital of of the Kyokoku clan. Simple as that. Then we have the go to home province is talking about the actual clan. We are the So clan and this is the home province of the clan. So for example, you are lost in here and you click here, you return to the home province. Then we have here the ledger. Now, the ledger is very important. The ledger is a useful tool for keeping track of the game's big picture. So this is um, something that perhaps people don't use a lot, but it allows you to see what is happening all over the actual match. Uh, this is going to talk about the different factions Buddhist Christian provinces, diplomacies, current wars. This is important because, for example, you can see the clan Date is at war with the clan uh, Wesugi and the clan Shirakawa. Here you can see. You can even uh, click each of the 
of the actual pictures there and it's going to send you directly to that clan leader where he is and stuff like that where he is well actually this guy that's a Muni. now that i mentioned this where he is is in Tsukuba Tsukuba is let me see how how do you find that you go to to here you write here Tsukuba you click here and then you know here you know that here is the this guy so let's remember this thing is not the capital this thing is where he actually is the actual character okay so let's uh, continue continue with this then we have up here messages high priority messages and low priority messages these are um for example this high priority message they are all defined on let me show you here if you go here and you go to message settings you can here um, customize which are going to be the high priority messages here it says here the description and the low priority messages it all depends on what do you want how do you feel uh, comfortable with so you're going to see here for example if you click here you see uh, for example, Kikuchi Sachi has died at age 32, it's going to tell you stuff like that. And the brown one is going to tell you things that are not so important. So Norisuki has ambition to become master of the guard and stuff like that. Here you can discar dis discard the message, go to the area that happened, or discard all, uh, all that is here. You can as well, you see, you see uh, here uh, left clicking. But if you right click you do the same you discard the actual tab so that is how you do this very quickly now let's concentrate ourselves uh, up here we see the ruler view here is going to show you the character sheet i like to name this the character sheet because it's more like a um, role-playing game you know and this is the clan uh the clan card or the character card um this of course is called the status window so that is according to the manual this is called the status window you will use this panel to perform most actions in the game at the far left is your character portrait and here is the family emblem then here we see three icons that track important measures of your character's power these important measures are wealth domain and honor Wealth is represented by a coin. The main is represented by a banner which is called a mon, and uh, the honor is represented by a kabuto samurai helmet. So I'm going to talk about each of these because these are the currencies that you're going to use in game. Wealth represented by this coin means that each month your province will produce income based on their size level of development and the abilities of your vassals you need wealth to construct buildings hire troops and support the emperor then we have the domain the domain you can see two numbers here okay the first number is the current number of provinces you personally control and the second number is the number that you are able to effectively administer everything based on the intrigue of your character the higher the intrigue this is in the counterpart with ck2 here it's based on intrigue the the higher the intrigue the more you're going to be able to um the more the main you're going to be able to control and to administer and uh, in ck2 there is uh, another uh, thing here that is called stewardship but here yeah, because of that because stewardship is unexistent is uh, based on intrigue and then honor which is one of the most important currencies here this is the amount of respect that you have as a clan leader as a daimyo as whatever you are which is actually and most likely a samurai this is based on the uh, Bushido because uh, in these times uh, the samurai the, the samurai warrior case they had this Bushido code and this is the measure of that Bushido uh, of the Bushido so what is this uh, well 
This allows you to declare war and to break alliances because every time you do things that are not, uh, that are very selfish and that are questionable, this is going to subtract honor from you. And there is a lot of things that revolve around honor. One of these things is to commit seppuku or harakiri, which is to introduce in your guts a small katana and cut all your guts and basically kill yourself. But this was considered honorably in the Bushido code, meaning that in here, when you have low honor, you are forced to commit seppuku. However, you can commit seppuku when you have low honor. What does that mean? That if you do this, for example, if you commit seppuku, you're going to, your heir is going to add its own honor to the pool, and then it's going to be added a little bit of honor when you uh, commit seppuku. And that is for the honor of the clan. And finally, we have this uh, bar. This bar, uh, the colored bar along the very bottom of the status window shows your progress towards conquering 50% of Japan and being able to claim the title of Shogun. In the center of the status bar, below wealth, domain and honor, is a row of eight icons which are this as well. So, what are these uh, eight icons? We have the first, the first icon here. Here you see your um, courtiers, or what is called here the advisors. We have three of them. So here you are allowed to appoint master of ceremonies, master of the arms, and master of the guard. Each of these guys will work towards uh, improving your clan standing and your clan territories, so on and so forth. You can do different options depending on what is the guy. You can see that each of these guys are represented by one of the attributes here. And for example, the um, the master of ceremonies, you can have uh, improved village, you can go on improve relations, collect taxes with the master of arms, you can do improve the castle, recruit running. This is the court card and it shows you this important stuff. Then we have the clan. What is the clan view? Is where you can interact with other members of your clan. You can see the current leader and you can nominate your candidate to succeed him upon his death. The only way that you can nominate an, a, one of your sons or whatever um, is when you are the clan leader. You can nominate and then if you're not a clan leader, I believe you will have pretenders. Now, the other thing that you can do here is interact with other characters that are on your realm. And then you have this thing that is called decisions. Uh, decisions here are um, things that you can do if you are the clan leader. The, um, the more rank you have, the more options you are going to have here. Then you have the military. Military here shows you the state of your clan's armies. It shows the total number of troops available to the clan, which is this number here, as well as how effective they will be in combat. And it has panels showing you the total number of feudal troops you can send to war and the number that are currently activate and deployed in the field. These are called the levies. You can rise each separate separately here and or you can rise all, you can as well recruit retinues here, which are standing armies. So this is total rised, indicating that we have retinues already here. And the other number here is very important. You have a retinue cap, and this means that you can recruit up to seven. And there is showing you why. Plots, 